Today we're going to set the AV cage up for a Sharp uh, Note Vision XR30X. The first thing you're going to want to do when you're setting up an AV cage is determine two things. Which direction you're going to have the vertical support arms underneath the AV cage. Are they going to run from front to back or are they going to run across the light path? So either with the light path or across. Now on this projector I've determined earlier that the best way of doing this is to actually run the support arms across the light path as opposed to parallel to the light path. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take an inside L, place it on the edge of the unit and then take an outside L over and fit it so that it is as snug as possible. And that's how I determine my width location. I am one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm in the sixth width position. Now to do the height on it, you can do the height two ways, but the easiest way of doing it is doing very similar to what we just did with the uh, width. And that is to use the two inside and outside L's so that the unit passes all the way across up above the unit, being paying particular attention to where the feet are on the unit. I'm trying to be careful with that so you don't, you don't scratch the chassis as well. So on this unit I am on the second height setting, one, two. So now that I have my width and height settings, I'll make note of those. So I've set the, the inside and outside L's and I can go ahead and put one of the security nuts onto, onto these. When I do that, I'll take my driver and I will insert my handy dandy, insert it into a handy dandy driver. It just fits on a standard quarter inch socket. You can use a driver like this or you can use a quarter inch ratchet, whatever your preference is. For, uh, for the purposes right now, I'm going to use the, um, the driver. It's a little bit quicker and simpler. Uh, those tightened up. Next, I'll take my top plates and I'll set my top plates to the same sixth spot. Two, three, four, five, six. One too many. And I'll verify before. There we are. Proceeding any further. Again, I'll set the top plates up. Now that you have your top plates bolted together, the next thing you're going to want to do is take the projector and set it in its relative position to the top plates and mark roughly where the lens is going to be relative to the top plates. This is an important step as it will assist you terrifically when you go to mount the, the assembled AV cage onto the pipe as the projector won't be in it and this way you will know which of the four sides of the AV cage needs to face the screen. So I just use a little bit of, uh, of scotch tape and mark it across the approximate position of the, of the lens. Now the reason why I've chosen this side as the lens, as opposed to rotating it, is the position that the lock tab is going to be. My lock tab bolts on into these, one of these six positions. So I want to have my lens on the opposite side because my, my wings and the, the wing assembly is going to wrap around the projector approximately here. So I want to have my light path opposite the side where the wings are when the arms run perpendicular to the light path. The next step we're going to need to do is select the position for the arms on the AV cage. Now because I've determined that the arms are going to run perpendicular, here's my lens. The arms will run perpendicular to the light path. I need to figure out the best position for those. Typically you're going to want the arms to be as far apart as you possibly can so you've got as much support and as wide a distance and as secure a, uh, as secure a cage as you can possibly have. It's important to note that the outside arm bolts on to the inside top plate and that the inside arm bolts on to the outside top plate. 
And with this particular projector, I am able to put these in the widest possible stance, or perhaps I will bring these from the widest possible stance here in by one so that I, I close it up just a, just a half an inch. Aesthetically, I think there may be an advantage to doing that with this particular projector. So here I'll put the outside arm onto the inside top plate and I'll do the same with the other outside arm same thing over here make sure the alignment is the same so if you're in the second hole from the edge with the outside arm you're in the second hole from the edge on the inside arms Now that you have the arms bolted onto your top plates, you, you will need to now remember that the height position, we determined it to be the second. So I'm going to take my inside and outside L assemblies and put them into the second position, just like this, and then put the nuts on them in just a moment. There's the two in place, and now I'll just secure those fasteners. From time to time the oval drive driver will get engaged and stuck in the oval drive uh, nut or bolt. The only thing you need to do is wiggle it back and forth to be able to pull it and rotate it back um, just a, a quarter of a turn. Now that I have my cage mostly set up, I will now start in on the wings and bottom bar assemblies. I'll set the cage aside. And because the height of the uh, unit is on the second side, I know that the height of the wings will also be on the second hole. Now that I've set the height for the two wing brackets, the next thing I need to do is determine what the length of the wing assembly is going to be on the AV cage. To determine the length of the wing assembly, what I need to do is set the, AV, or the projector back inside the AV cage and see if the projector itself protrudes beyond the top plates and it requires a length setting that's anything larger than the minimum that you can get with the wing assembly. If the projector protrudes beyond the width of the top plates, then you simply need to adjust, or then you simply need to adjust the wings to accommodate that additional length. Now, with this particular projector, it is the minimum length setting required. The minimum length setting is the smallest configuration that you can have with the bottom bar bolting to the wings. It is possible to set the length setting so it is not symmetrical with the bottom bar between the and the wings and that way you can accommodate in the event that your projector needs to slide either forward or back to accommodate a light path that is um, uh, going in between the two support arms. There is some play in the way that the bolts will tighten on this unit and it is best if you actually tighten these or loosen them off once it's put together and reduce the height as much as you possibly can. The unit is designed to be as snug as possible and because it is designed to be as snug as possible sometimes you end up with an additional, you, you reduce the gap on the wings or increase the gap on the support arms, making it a little bit more difficult to put the unit together, put the wings over the unit. So by reducing the overall setting of the, the overall height of the AV cage to its minimum, 
and maximizing the height uh, available on the wings, you will make it a little bit easier. So you're maximizing this distance and minimizing this distance. The wing assembly, when assembled correctly, will tightly slide over the outside top plate and the outside L's. The wing assembly slides over and is nice and snug. It is possible that if this dimension is at its maximum and this dimension is at its minimum, that you will have great difficulty getting the unit to slide over. Now that we have the wing set to the appropriate length for the specific projector that we're using, we will position the lock tab, we'll determine the position of the lock tab on the AV cage. To do so, the first thing we're going to do is take the projector and slide it into the AV cage according to the orientation that it will be once it is deployed in the field. Again, referencing that the lens is just over the tape that we put on earlier. And we'll now take the wings, flip those so that they'll be in the proper orientation, and slide the wings over top of the completed unit. And we'll want to get the wings as close into the center as we possibly can without Causing, causing as minimal obstruction as we possibly can of any of the inputs on the back of the projector. So now that we have that unit, it's best if you actually hold it in place, otherwise... There we are. And here you can rotate the projector, and it is best that you do rotate the projector to check and see what interference you're going to have, whether you're going to block your IR inputs, or what inputs you're requiring on the back of your projector. Now this one's a mock-up, so those are just images, obviously. And we'll slide that over. That one is a little bit too far. So we do want to try and get the lock tab as close to the center as we possibly can. The further over the lock tab is here, the harder it would be for someone to leverage this unit, i.e. pry these units off in a theft attempt. So here I am in the third position, so I'll take my lock tab, put it in the third position, and take the square head nuts, or bolts, pardon me, square head bolts, and drop those through the, through the holes in the lock tab, so that they're in the correct position, and drop them in. That's now in its position, and I can now remove the projector from the AV cage and bolt these on. With the lock tab now bolted in place, the wings set to the appropriate size that they need to be set, and my lock bar is still free, you're now ready to install the AV cage onto the bottom of your standard 1.5 inch NPT drop pipe in the field.